Hi, this is Sandy McManus with NeedsARibbon.com and I am coming to you live this f Wednesday, I was going to say Friday, Wednesday, April 18th, um, 2018, and I want to talk about gable boxes, our lovely gable boxes. Give me just a minute, I see something I need to adjust. No. Nope. Sorry, there's like shadows there and it's kind of bugging me. I'm playing with lighting again. Um, if you follow me regularly, you know that I have lighting issues because I'm in a basement and I do not have any like southerly exposure windows in this house or anything like that. So, um, it's not quite a cave, but it's darn close. Anyway, well, people hopefully tune in. Um, Give me a wave or a shout or something if you're there. Um, but yeah, why is it so deeper? That bugs me. Is it better if I come in here? Nope. Okay. Is that any better? No. Why? Oh, I think I know what it is. Anyway, I will have to play with that. Sorry, my, I popped my microphone off playing with my lights. That's what I, that's what I get for playing. Um, anyway, I'm going to get started. So today I want to, I'm, by the way, if you haven't guessed it, I've kind of, I haven't talked a whole lot about it, but I am back to doing lives on a regular basis. And they're going to be Mondays and Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. Obviously, there's exceptions to every rule, but I'm going to try and keep it to Mondays and Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. Um, I actually have so much to share this week that I'm going to try. Uh, no promises yet. I will announce that if I am, uh, be live this Friday because I realize I have so much to share today that I don't have a chance to share my box of goodies that came couple days ago that I haven't even opened up all the new colors and everything that are coming out from Stampin' Up. So I just have too much. I have a long list of things I want to cover. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. That's all I have to say. So I want to talk about, um, as I reach across the camera, um, the gable boxes. I packed all my little supplies up all nicely and I realized I should have probably just pulled a box out to show you. Okay, so the gable boxes come in a pack of 12. So they are a really good deal. I know I've mathed it out before. I think they're 80 cents a box. I'd have to look at it again, but they're, is that right? I think it's $8 for 12, so that comes out to like 80 cents, 75 cents, something like that. I can math it later. But anyway, they're gorgeous. I really think they're pretty. They have a nice kind of foil covering, smooth. Um, tape does stick fairly well to it, normal mono adhesive I found, but I would make sure and probably use something else. Anyway, this is how they come. They come flat to assemble them. You... I would pre um, burnish all my score lines on here before I start assembling because once you start assembling, it's kind of like a train that can't be stopped. Well, it can. They can be folded back down because I put one together at convention last fall on stage and I unfolded it to take it home. But I would before you start assembling, once you've got your plan figured out, I would, um, let's get these out of the way. I would uh, burnish all your sides. Uh, you don't need a bone folder. You don't want to score it that much because you probably are going to end up marring the silver foil outside. So I would just use your fingers and, you know, like I did, kind of push them in, make sure they're nice and those folds are nice and crisp. So assemble your bottom first. So with your box squared, the corner squared, Put your two little flaps in, put this one, flap C we'll call it, 
and then you're going to tuck in flap D. Kind of like that. Actually, nope, I got that wrong. Wow. I normally have done this right. So we'll call that flap A, B, C, and then you get that nice crisscross bottom. And it is very square, as you can see. So that's nice because we pre-burnished our sides. So to fill it, that's what it looks like. And you can fill it, pop these out. So I will finish showing you how it puts together. Push those in, push the top long flaps in. And take these little side ones. You get the little pop-out pieces. And that's how it assembles. Really easy. No cutting, no gluing, no nothing. It comes as a flat box. Flat box. And then it turns into what I just showed you. So, setting that one aside. This is the one we made at On Stage with the Uh, not pedal palette. Oh, phooey. So these boxes became available in the occasions catalog, which I didn't grab. Um, and they're an adorable little box. They come, they are four, they're four by two. So that's the size they are. They're two inches by four inches. Yep. So, and this is the one we did at, at on stage. Just a simple wrap around it. And you're done. You know, add a little tag, add a little ribbon. I used Terran tape to put this on. And um, I actually have, I have another one decorated here. Did I put the Terran? Nope, I didn't put the Terran tape on there. Anyway, so I recommend it's 2 inch by 12 inch is the size you'll need to wrap the bottom of the box if that's what you want to do. But I recommend going just a little bit shy of 2 inches, just inside what they call the kerf line, the cut line, um, just because it is like exactly 2 inches and then you might, you know, end up with a little bumping up. So to assemble it, well, um, we'll just use this box. So pick your starting point. And you're going to want tear and tape there and you tape it down, burnish your, you really don't need to score ahead of time, just burnish, 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 and then tape that final side down. And when you burnish really good, you actually can get those pretty much closed. So you might want to put that on like the back corner of whatever you're going to call the front and back of your box. So that's all it is little bit of sticky or a little bit of uh, tear and tape slightly less than two inch strip by 12 inch piece of designer series paper this is from the retiring birthday and friends suite oh I just I'm gonna miss that poodle um, anyway so that's it on that one and as I was playing with this idea okay so here's the other one I did just simple box, a piece of DSP, a little fun bow, and a little tag using our coffee cafe. It's in the annual catalog. It is a retiring suite. The dies and the stamp set that go with this suite are... I don't think they're retiring. I honestly haven't looked too closely. But in any case, the paper is always retiring because it they just retire paper every year. Anyway, so that's it. Made a cute little tag. I did these little corrugated, variegated um, things that are in that suite. Those little tags. I brought them with. Yes, I did. They're called corrugated elements. And it comes in that suite. And they're just little cute little corrugated. You could use either side comes with ovals, the hearts,
and then little tags. They're adorable. And you could stamp on them and do all kinds of fun things with them too, because they are paper. So we have those. And that cute little thing. And that is that DSP that you can barely see behind that. That is actually the back of this paper, which I already put the paper away. But it's all it's white with coffee beans on it and early espresso. Setting that one aside. And then I thought, okay, they're paper boxes, right? Paper embosses. So why can't we run it through the emboss? The big shot. Isn't this adorable? I am so proud of this cute little box. Um, and especially with this foilish finish, it just, it's just adorable. So how do you do that? How do you make, how do you emboss a box that comes flat like this? Because embossing folders naturally have like a, a positive and a negative image because of how they emboss. So if you ran this through, if you stuck it in a folder um, and ran it through, let me grab one, and ran it through, you're going to get a positive and a negative image, which may be, you know, fine, but that's not going to work for most of your projects. It's going to look kind of goofy, right? So what I recommend you do is you're gonna pull your box apart um, using either an X-Acto knife or a letter opener. I happen to have inherited from my dad this nifty little letter opener that has a slightly serrated edge and it worked like magic for splitting this box apart. So you're gonna to wanna to find, because it is put together with one flat sheet of paper, you're gonna to wanna to find where that seam is that it comes together, lay your box down, and you're gonna to have to get up kind of and I'll put instructions on my website too, but kind of get up. That is that? No, that isn't the right one. Oops, there it is. Um, so your box is facing upright when you, if you're a righty. If you're a lefty, you probably have to fix your box, flip your box the other way. So you're gonna wanna get in there and you're gonna kind of cut it. You're breaking, see there's a little, um, the little flap that closes it. And yes, you're going to have to mutilate your box a little bit, but you don't want to cut too thin. Oops, I actually cut the, <laughs> of course on live, I screw it up. Oops, that flap should have come with. I still have enough to tape it closed, but I did several others last night in playing with this and they worked fine. So that's just the joy of doing things live and unedited and you make a few mistakes. But anyway, yeah, you just kind of start and you have to make sure you're getting in between the flap and the box itself. Okay, then you're going to take and, no, God, what am I doing? Wow, whoo. You're gonna take and we're going to use the polka dot embossing folder. So I wanna see what it looks like with polka dots. So this is the top where the Stampin' Up! logo is, is where how you're gonna get the embossed polka dots. If you want debossed or what's engraved, yeah, it would be engraved polka dots, flip your folder over and place that to the outside. So I want embossed, so I want to make sure the top, and, and then you're going to want to line up the edge of where it embosses to, I say, because you don't want to, if you break, if you emboss that handle, which is fine, it'd be beautiful, but that is breaking down the fibers of the box a little bit, and that was the other thing I forgot to tell you. You want to make sure you're folding what is left of your flap, you want to fold that down. So bring it back in and you'll see it lines up perfectly if you're not doing this live and a little nervous. So I can get that in just a little bit more so I make sure I'm getting all the way to that score line there. Can't 
can't go all the way otherwise your folder is not going to close but really really close it's hanging up on something okay and close that and you see how it gets edge to edge top to bottom not that anyone cares about the bottom and then you want to take your big shot and make your little sandwich which for this thinner folder is your normal big shot platform I have an old platform but it's just the normal big shot platform that comes with the big shot now one of your um, plates put your sandwich down put your other plate the top of your bun as I have always said hamburger kind of thing and you want to run it through okay how did we do oh that is so cute isn't that adorable okay so let's do the other side of the box we'll line it up again where am I so we'll line it up don't want to get that handle because that does break the fibers down a little bit fold our flap in oh looks like I need to go a little bit more because it cuts off Yep, perfect. Isn't this adorable? I think it's adorable. The basket one was just kind of a boom wow pro project. Okay. Let me put the big shot aside. And yes, because it is foil paper, you are going to have a little bit of that you know the edges showing and stuff you could kind of probably rub them out like you can with our foil paper put that aside but isn't that going to be cute so now what's left of my flap since I mutilated this box had lots of successful ones and then I mutilate the one that I do live I have my tear and tape I have my tear and tape I had tear and tape Where's my tearing tape? Oh my goodness. Um, hold on a minute. Oh. Never mind. It just fell out of the box. Here's my tearing tape. So you need just a tiny strip of the tearing tape because remember the box normally comes assembled, so you just are redoing that adhesive that came on the box. In this case, the mutilated box. And um, I'm going to have to, because it didn't have anything, it'll still stay shut. And then you want to, I, this is how I recommend, is you fold your box in half, push that little flap in, and that way it's going to line up perfectly. Except for the mutilation that I gave it uh, whoops um, so then we go and assemble our box push that flap in the kind of um, like a reverse goal, goal post on. no it's like I, I don't know and we push that in put the side flaps in put the one with the tab isn't that cute that is so cute Anyway, um, so here we go. Isn't that cute? So then to put paper on this, if we wanted, we'd have to put a little, little tear and tape on that. And I do recommend tear and tape. I mean, you can use mono or other things, but if you want this box to make sure it stays closed because it does have kind of a waxy finish, remember, burnish, burnish, boom, boom, put your other piece of tear and tape and there you go. And you can decorate the front of the box. There's lots of things you can do with these boxes. You can make another little tag like I did for this. Or a little tag like we have here. And just hang it from the handle. 
or you can, you know, put a greeting here. This one's actually hung from the ribbon. Um, isn't that cute? Okay, so when I was putting these together, um, little lesson learned, a little forgotten lesson, and that's what the ne next thing I wanted to talk about, and then I will be done uh, for today. Um, our embossing folders. They do have a top and a bottom. Like I said, they have an embossed and a debossed or an engraved versus embossed image. The top will always be the raised image. So to prove that, I um, get some stuff out of the way. Um, oh, and then, you know, with these little boxes, that's what I was thinking of with this one. You could fill it with tea bags or some, you know, some of those little K cups or whatever and give gift that to someone. Wouldn't that be a nice I'm thinking of you gift? Or chocolate in here. Or if you make cookies or fudge. You know, isn't that just this would be a great Mayday gift, honestly. Think about it. It's a little basket and give them, you know, some cookies. Um maybe even a little potted plant in there. I think this would be an adorable May Day gift. If you give May Day gifts to your neighbors and friends or coworkers or whatever. So here we have the polka dot one. Okay. So lesson learned on the, um, <laughs> the, uh, which way is up thing. I was in a hurry trying to, um, um, show you some things. So I am going to be putting together a chart. Here is the polka dot, the large polka dots. And here is the embossed image and here is the debossed or engraved image. I'm hoping you can see that. Um, both are cute. I mean, it just kind of depends on the way you like your polka dots or if you're trying to make it look like bubbles or whatever. Um, but yes, lesson learned when it says Stampin' Up or Sizzix, that will always be the top making the raised image. Oops. I made some goofs, which are in the garbage and long gone. So this, um, I can't remember the name of this folder. It's got the little pluses things. So this is it. I did not do one the other way. Well, you can kind of see it. I have stuff on the back. Both are cute. Um, this lucky star is this called? makes kind of the stars there's the embossed and there's the debossed engraved image um, again some lessons learned along the way uh, here is one of our petal palette ones that makes it actually it seems kind of uh, crazy but the fold is on the bottom it's a normal you'd probably orient it so the folds on the top the fold is on the bottom getting your stems going the right way and there is your uh, the embossed stems and that's what they look like debossed which is kind of a cool look almost looks like barbed wire that way um, I'm gonna keep going brick the brick one of our bigger folders but still takes a normal sandwich here's the normal brick where you have the recessed mortar and here is, I think they both look really cool. It just depends where, you know, sometimes you do brick and you have the oozing out mortar joints. Um, so that was what, that's when you'd have, it, when you're doing cardstock, it really doesn't matter because there is no top and bottom. But if you're doing, let's say some designer paper or like the box or something like that, you need to pay attention to which way you need to flip what you're sticking in there. So there's your, your and again, I'm gonna try and come up with a chart uh, here's the um, woodland birch. I keep calling birch, but it is really more of a woodland. I think it's called woodland. Um, here is that's the flip image. I've seen it used both ways. Both are absolutely gorgeous. I love this folder. I have given it a lot of love. Um, next, our gently falling one. Okay. Um, the first time I did this okay gently falling looks like snowflakes you know landing or falling heavily from the sky or raindrops just depends on because it's lighter on the top and heavier on the bottom or you know whichever way you orient it okay 
So here is the flip. So you get the debossed engraved and it makes an interesting texture, doesn't it? I hope you guys can see this okay. Um, and then this one's called Holly. It's called Holly. I'm, um, which is gorgeous. And then again, you get the debossed image. Um, it's pretty cool too. Petal. Is it just called Petal? Here's that one. And then the debossed image. I have used the debossed of this. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I like the kind of recessed little petals. Um, this one's retired. It was in the fall catalog. The snowflake and the snowflake. Um, I keep going. I'm almost done. Because there's a reason I did this. I This is in the occasions catalog. Our new, the thicker... Um, not definition. I can't think of what they call these. Um, I didn't write top on there. I was writing top on all of mine. Um, but this is the sequin one. And this is what happens when you don't pay attention. You get engraved sequins. Whoops. So this is the engraved look and this is the normal look. The engraved look is kind of cool. It gives it almost a, a hardware look. So, and it was actually, you know, almost a happy accident. So, if, you know, the sequins would be kind of girly. But if you flip it around, you know, it gives it almost a hardware look. So, you know, happy accident, I guess. Um, oh, name, wavy thing. Um, so... And I, this is another one that I flipped it around by accident in rushing. I cut apart a box. I cut apart actually two boxes to kind of show you what they look like on the foil, the silver box, silver gable boxes. Okay, and keep going because y'all are probably falling asleep. The cable knit. Um, I can't, what do they call it? I can't, I'm drawing a blank what they call these super thick ones, but you have to make a different sandwich on your big shot. Just a reminder on that. I flipped this around, did it the wrong way, whoops, still a pretty texture, but this is normally, that. that's what that is, here's what it normally would look like, so still a cool texture, but not quite what I was looking for. Um, seaside is this one called, so, and this is another normal sandwich but bigger die so here's the one problem with this die is because it cuts so many ridges it you do lose a lot of integrity in your paper or your box um, so here's the normal way and here is if you can kind of see that when I flipped it around almost looks like grooves in the sand uh moving on and again i want to try and come up with some kind of chart on this because i think it's kind of cool it was an experiment because i messed up once again and flipped actually i didn't flip my box around i just didn't pay attention to the orientation of my um die this is another one of those thick <sighs> the name is escaping me um, but this one makes variegated uh impressions it's it's um kind of hard to show on camera some parts aren't as deep as others and it's really cool um, so here is the raised image and here is your debossed engraved image also beautiful they both are beautiful and this was my accidental debossed image it's still kind of pretty but again wasn't my intended oops we're almost done folks we're in the home stretch so the new petal palette that pairs with the other one that just was the stemmy thing. This is the flower one. Um, so what happened? I got them mixed up. Wow. We'll need to go fix that, folks. 
I got them way mixed up. So one is the raised image and one is the debossed image. Whoops, I will need to fix that. So you get that idea. Um, and here I kind of mess. Nope, that's the raised image. So that is the right one and this is the wrong one. It looks really pretty. It just fits enough to do the two inch tall box all the way around. Okay, nope, here's my other one. So here is your embossed and here is your debossed images. Moving on. You're probably all gone and falling asleep. Our lovely new basket embossing folder that was available during celebration for free with a hundred dollar order. Yay! That stamping up, that was awesome. Um I thought, okay, I have not seen anyone do the flip. So here's the correct way. It looks like a box. I flipped it around. It's actually kind of a cool texture. Um, doesn't quite look as basket baskety, but it's just, I don't know how to describe it, but it is pretty darn cool. Um, geometric almost. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool. May have to come up with a project for that one. Almost to the bottom of my little basket, the stripes. Another one of these, like the seaside, that kind of breaks down your paper because of how it cuts and everything. Um, it's like super scoring your paper. So this is the flip where you get the debossed slash engraved image. And then here's your raised embossed image. And you know, of course, you can run your stripes this way. Yeah. The trellis folder. I goofed on this one too because I was hurrying. So here's the normal raised embossed image and here's your debossed engraved. I've, I've used both. They're both beautiful. They really are. It's a beautiful folder. Uh, butterflies. Butterflies. It's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so here's your normal embossed butterflies and the debossed butterflies. Both are beautiful. Both have been used by many people. Just depends on what you're going for. And the very last one, which I think any one of us that have had this folder have used it both ways. I had to try this on the box. I absolutely had to try this one on the Silver Gable box. It's just kind of mesmerizing. When you see it in person, it's almost like an optical illusion because it, it gives it with that shine, it gives it so much um, texture and, and whatnot. It's just it's fascinating. Um, you can almost see the image shift. It's really cool. Not sure it's working so well on the camera. Anyway, so here's the embossed image. Here's your debossed image very good. Anyway, I have um, gone on a very long time today because again, I had a lot to show you and I'm not going to get to finish everything. So just remember to emboss your gable box or to make your gable box. They're so cute. Um, here's your little gable boxes. To emboss it, use an X-Acto knife or a letter opener or something to break apart your little flap seal there fold it out. Make sure that you are putting it in the folder foil side to the top so you're getting the correct image. <laughs> Lesson learned. And you'll have to run it through twice, both ways. And if you have a folder that has directionals, like this one doesn't have a direction, but the butterfly definitely, the folder definitely does, make sure you are paying attention when you run that box through the one half and the other half that you are orienting them with the handle up both ways. Um, and a little sticky or a little tear and tape to close that box back up. Make sure you um, pre-fold your or pre-burnish your um, flaps before you put your box together because it does make it a lot easier. You don't have to do it before you run it through the folder if you're going to emb emboss it but definitely before you start putting your box together, it does assemble better and it seems to stay in place a little bit better. 
I'm gonna have to go decorate this. Anyway, um, have fun, play with it. Please post on here if you play with this idea. I'm fascinated by this one again. Um, <laughs> this is my amusement for the rest of the day, just looking at this in the light. <laughs> um, let me know if you play with it. Post some ideas on here with what you come up with anyway. I thank you for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of what you can do with these gable boxes. I think they're adorable. I think they'd make a great gift. Mayday, hello. Um, or even this one with a little flower in it or something, whatever people do in Mayday back, back you know, or candy or whatever, or someone that's a coffee or tea lover or maybe isn't even feeling good. Um, some little green tea if they're not feeling good. Thank you for stopping by. Really appreciate you hanging there <laughs> through my long presentation of all the embossing folders. I will do my best to try and come up with some kind of chart, visual chart or something to um, demonstrate what I was talking about. Uh, I need to think on that. So give me a little bit of time on that. Bye.